<laughs> hey everyone, welcome back to the Paid Church Podcast. My name is Jason Rothman. As always, I'm joined by the great Chris Schaefer. Yes, 2020 Chris. Oh, How's it going? That's, that's all I got Jason's. For you today. That's Jason's little winter sick voice. Isn't it sad? It's so sad. He's got his little cup of coffee. And he drinks it. It's in my throat, guys. I got a little cough. It's um, it's it's good to be here, Jason. I'm sorry you are under the weather. I know you're deathly ill, um, and we're glad you're here. Um, you know, I'll try and hold the show together while you are trying to maintain your uh, yourself. Uh, but uh, thanks for joining us. Happy 2020 again. Um, we are back again. It seems like every week it's like that was it. There's nothing else we could possibly talk about. Uh, we have talked about everything in Google Ads. There's nothing new, you know, like might as well shut it down. And then immediately it, we have ideas again. So we got a great topic today. Uh, and I only know half of it. Today we're going to talk about uh, two topics each. And these are things like what's happening in our mind, what's happening, uh, what's happening with our current situation, with our clients, with the Google ads uh, industry, with uh, strategies and tactics that we're going, you know, what are some new things that uh, we're bringing to that are on our minds currently. And I got a couple things to share. I know Jason always has something unique, uh, a unique spin on it. So before we get into that, um, I want to tell you guys about our sponsor, Optio. Optio, O-P-T-E-O dot com slash PSP, and you can save time on your Google Ads management. That's what this tool is all about. You know, I get people uh, that contact me all the time and say, you know, Chris, are there some good ways to uh, create checklists, to do this, you know, some automate some things, people that talk about scripts and rules and stuff like that. Guys, why try and reinvent the wheel when Optio has done it for you? This is an automated time consuming uh, or time saving, I should say, uh, process that you can do things like uh, test ad creative, optimize your bids, um, uh, cool things like analyze your search terms, quickly just go through them. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, good, bad, good, bad, and be able to quickly add and exclude the things that you need on a quick, easy, automated process. You have issues with your landing page. You have problems where one of the landing pages went down. Boom, you just got an email alert. You just got an alert to tell you, hey, something's wrong. Um, all kinds of uh, automated systems that can help you and alert you about things. Very visual system. You're going to love the way this looks because it doesn't look like the thing you stare at every single day. It's going to have new buttons, new graphics, new colors, new tools, and they're all there to save time. So check it out. Been a sponsor for a long time. We really appreciate them, and we believe in this tool. We both use it. We both like it opteo.com slash PSP to get a extended trial. Go to the little chat bubble at the very bottom of the page when you go to the URL and say, hey, I'm a listener of, the, listener of the PSP. Can I get the extended trial? They say, absolutely, sir, because you are special. opteo.com slash PSP opteo. That's it. Jason. Yo. How are you? with Google ads, are you still the Michael Jordan of your time? Do you have anything Michael Jordan-ish to share with us? Yep, uh, but first I wanna read Oliver's review from Great Britain, it's real quick, Chris, it's five stars. And uh, the great thing about the Apple Podcast reviews, the more great re reviews that you all leave, the higher we go up in the rankings. We start creeping into the top business podcast on the charts, mm -hmm. and then we're in the mix right now with the top marketing podcast in the world. So the more reviews you provide, the higher up in the rankings we'll go, and uh, we'll crack that top 10 of overall marketing podcasts. So we appreciate it. This one comes from Oliver in Great Britain, the right mix of entertainment and content, five stars. I have learned a lot about PPC from this podcast. Keep up the great work, guys. Are you serious? You read that's that all. one? <laughs> that's, I tell you what, that's an honor because uh, you really prefer those long-winded, uh, extremely detailed <laughs> ones. That must, have, it must be a, must be your death, deathly ill sickness that you have right no, now. No, it's, uh, it's the, it's the uh, UK, the ones from England, from the UK, those reviews. Uh, they seem to be very short to the point. They're in a rush. They got mm -hmm. stuff to do. 
And I think that's as as, uh, fawning as we're going to get from some people across the pond, but (laughs) that's okay. I appreciate it. So Chris, yeah, today we're going to do two topics that we're each uh, kind of focusing on going into this year that we're thinking a lot about. And then we've got a, a kind of business topic for Patreon, each of us. So I'll kick it off here, Chris. 2020 focuses or my focus is going in, into this year things I'm thinking about right now I was doing this before the podcast started I was pruning pausing limiting taking away some broad match modified and that is my first focus going into this year I am being very careful and more careful in this new year about broad match modified keywords I'm focusing on quality, phrase exact, and I'm also paying up for it. I think one of the biggest mistakes I've seen, both with myself and then clients I do marketing for, as a marketer, we get a little hung up on that cost per conversion. When at the end of the day, if you're getting a business, a great cost per conversion, and then it goes up by 5%, but you're getting more conversions or even 30%, maybe it's still really doing great things for their business. And, uh, I'm really focusing on quality, paying up for it. I I have been disgusted by some of the performance of some broad match modified keywords that I put in, both with the search terms mm-hmm. that come in. Also, they get marked with that low quality score, rarely seen status. Also, they get a horrible click through rate sometimes, and I'm over it. And I'm I'm absolutely over it. And when I select them and then look at what conversions are coming in, what search terms are bringing in conversions from that BMM. Usually it's phrase or exact stuff I would be targeting anyway. So that's a focus I'm having. How does that sit with you, Chris? Okay. Well, this is, this is a great topic um, because there's so many questions about how to implement something like this. I totally agree with you. Um, It seems like if there's going to be uh, a keyword that's spending more than half the budget, it's going to be that, uh, broad match modified keyword. I mean, it always creeps up. The 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 total spend is going to just take over. It always happens. And so my main my main, my main thing. My I have several questions. My first question is, when you talk about this, are you talking about uh, you know, a broad match modified keyword that has four words in it, three words in it, two words in it? Because most of the time, I get really apprehensive about two word modified broad match, but is that, I mean, if, if it has three or four words, are you even cutting something like that? Because I start to consider that to be pretty precise. Well, that's, that's what I've been discussing with lately. That, that's what's changed for me. So I used to have this thought based on what I thought was my experience. Maybe I'm misremembering. Maybe things actually have changed. I don't really know. I can't prove it either way. But I used to have the thinking, okay, I'm going to throw in a broad match modified and we'll call it a loose broad match modified, three or four words. I'll protect myself with a long phrase, four words or whatever, and I'll lock down one or two of those words with the modifier. I thought that used to work. I'm not seeing that work currently in some campaigns that I focus on a lot. And I'm just, I'm just kind of, that's what I'm seeing. So it's not so much the quantity of words and the old thinking, at least for me about, oh, I'll protect myself with the quantity of words. It's more been about what I've seen is the words in whatever length you have, two or four or five words, which of those words have the modifier on them? And what I've run into recently is I've had some big campaigns. I wanted to make them bigger. I started adding really loose broad match modified, testing stuff out, want to get some more traffic, see how it performs. And I have just been disappointed when I get away from the, when I get away from having the core terms in the, in the word uh, with the modifier on them. If, if I start taking the modifier off of those core words, uh, I'm, not, I'm not really seeing good traffic come from them. And the traffic that does come from them that happens to be good, I'd pick up anyway with tighter broad match modified in the sense of every word I need in the phrase that's important being modified or phrase and exact. So just haven't seen a lot of upside mm. from loose BMM and the problem is it just gets out of hand. You add a bunch of them and then it's like all of them start getting a little bit of spend and then you add it all together and it's a lot, but it's hard to see that just looking at it. So yeah. just kind of over it. I'm kind of focusing more on really, really high quality stuff. And I'm really 
I'm seeing it with the conversion rates. I, I'm just seeing some more competitive keywords, but the exact and phrase, but then I look at the conversion rate and it's beautiful, 15, 20% sometimes, sometimes more. And I'm like, I should just be going for that quality. What am I doing to myself? So if I understand correctly, you're replacing the broad match modified keyword with phrase and exact? No, I have process? it all going together. And I'm oh, I have it all okay. going together. Okay. And I'm saying, all right, why am I why am I kind of screwing things up with this loose broad match modified? And I'm still keeping some broad match modified where all important words in the phrase in the in the keyword are tagged with a modifier. But I've really just seen some poor results lately when not all really core terms have the modifier, both with search term quality, with cost per conversion, and with click-through rate and with quality score. And we'll get into it in a minute. My second thing I'm focusing on, but which, which is quality score, just to preview it, but I hate seeing that low quality score. I hate seeing that 0.2% click-through rate on a bunch of yeah. impressions. Yeah. It, it feels like it messes things up and it's not really worth the one conversion every six months for a really great cost per, or maybe not a great cost per conversion because usually when I'm seeing those come in, they're coming in from stuff I'm targeting anyway. So, well, yeah, that, that's what I'm wondering. I mean, so if you have something, what do you do for keywords that are modified um, that have <coughs> good return? Um, you know, that have really good cost per conversion that you like the click through rate on, you know, it tend to do really well. Do you, do you look into the search terms and pull out the longer tail phrase match, exact match stuff and try and wean those down to keep it? I mean, no, I because let's assume it, that they're good numbers. Do you it, still have a problem with them simply the because they're the modified? No, not at all. I'm seeing good results from broad match modified where I have every core term in the keyword phrase with the modifier. So if it's like, movers in dallas texas if i have movers and dallas with modifiers i'm seeing good search terms i'm seeing good good data if i do something like movers in dallas texas and i only put a plus sign on dallas because i'm trying to experiment mm -hmm. trying to grow a campaign even larger seeing the ways people are searching for things and I don't tag that other core term mover that's where I'm running into problems so I'm not even okay. really seeing that grade of search terms when I do that. And then when they do come in well, I might get a search like movers in Dallas that that loose broad match modified happens to pick up. And I'm like, okay, it's a back cost per conversion. The only reason it's getting some conversions is because these good search terms I would be getting anyway on the stuff I'm targeting with more lockdown BMM phrase and exact. So my, my okay. it, maybe it's a personal thing for me, but as we got into the second half of 2019, I kind of went on this, uh, maybe the middle of 2019, this this run of just really loosening things up with BMM. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. And I, I thought it was working for a time, but now I've seen, I've just had bad result after bad result where I'm changing my thinking on that loose BMM. So one thing that I, I do, um, because I remember us talking about this. I remember, and I, I like the idea, and I think I started experimenting around the same time around doing the, you know, modified just <coughs> on one word for a multiple word um, right. uh, a keyword. And so what I might do instead of Dallas movers, I'm, you know, I might put the plus on Dallas or movers Dallas and put the plus on Dallas. What I sometimes have done, and you know, tell me if this is something you've done as well, or uh, if you've had any experience with it is, putting higher or find or something like that, some type of action term in front of it um, to make it no longer a two word with only one plus, but instead but not it's a three higher. word, but still not modifying it. Only no, that, that's what I'm this. saying. That was my thinking in 2019. That's what you were doing. Okay. I could have thought when we were talking about broad match, like a pro and all that, I could have thought that's was helping, but lately I'm not seeing that influence the mm. quality as much as it used to maybe it's just me maybe i'm judging it wrong maybe it's my singular accounts i'm looking at maybe it's an overall loosening of similar match or whatever that wording is 
and they loosen things up. I don't know, but I know my own experience and I'm not liking when that, yeah. what, what the results I'm getting more. And I'm not, I'm not seeing me adding words to a BMM, making it longer tail and seeing that really do much, do much. Um, yeah. Going forward, my whole thing is going to be like, okay, if you think higher is a good idea, let's throw in higher and modify the word higher as well. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Let's go to yeah. a Google search and do higher, higher Dallas movers, see what the suggestions are at the bottom of the screen. And maybe there's another word like contact Dallas movers or something like that. Um, and I'm just, I don't know, I'm just leaning back towards the, the mode of, of just high conversion rates, quality and just really locking it down. That's where my mindset is going into the year. Yeah, that's great. That's great. I, I, I love how no matter what we talk about the, the, I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to come up, I'm going to have a similar type of like creative idea that I've mentioned to you before. It's going to be one of my topics. And I love how no matter the creativity in the way that you do the keywords, like I'm going to do phrase match with this, or I'm going to do modified broad with longer tail and only modify one keyword. It all comes down to just quality. Like how good is the quality? And there's no method that is superior to any other if you're hitting your metrics. If you're hitting your goal, if you're doing it right, then whatever, it's fine. And that's that's my that's my topic is, and I talked to you about this before. I don't have a I don't have a cool name for it. You know, we had the lazy build, um, the lazy yeah. Google Ads build that we, you know, did. I don't have anything, so you can you're the creative one. So I'll let you come up with a name for it. But Here's what here's here's my thing that I did, and I'm I'm ready to kind of share some of my results of what I uh, what I've seen. I mentioned to you this uh, off air, but I'll share it with the listeners. So here's what I've been trying. I had a client um, that uh, wanted to advertise in a very busy, high volume sector. A lot of searches out there, uh, and a lot of searches that will sit in the consumer. You know, I'm not I'm I'm looking to buy cheap. And also sitting in the business uh, sector, B2B sector of I'm looking to buy heavy, you know, like this is worth a ton of money. So because there's both ends of this, um, what I determined was I want to advertise on uh, and let's just stick with the movers because it's just such an easy topic. But because um, I don't want to share the details of the client, but um what I what I wanted to do was I wanted to advertise on Dallas movers. I have that as a phrase match, mm. okay? Not modified broad, but phrase match. And then what I did is I put the negative of exact match of that in the ad group. So I put Dallas movers exact match negative in that same ad group. So effectively what happens, I'm advertising on Dallas movers, but I will never show up on Dallas Movers. I instead will show up on higher Dallas Movers. Dallas Movers near me, find the best, who's the best, you know, affordable Dallas or uh, Dallas Movers affordable rates, you know, all these longer tail. It's going to force the system to show me everything except for that one keyword that you know is going to blow up the whole campaign. Dallas Movers by itself is going to be the most common because it's only two words long and it's basically the two core terms was your, was your client selling hairspray <laughs> no okay let's do That's hairspray it. then because dallas hairspray, movers okay. is such a great search you know what i mean like we, yeah, you, why it's would you not want to show but hairspray it's like if they're hairspray trying to get in front of people yeah. in the hairspray industry or whatever and they want to show up on cheaper longer tail stuff see what search terms are out there but not just totally waste their budget on super high volume super who knows what they mean you know it's going to get a ton of traffic. Hairspray. So like, so like, just hair. How about buy hairspray? Yeah, perfect. You know, or, or hairspray online or something like that. So okay, so so I, you, I think, you were doing hairspray. I would be terrified to do this with with just one word. To be clear, <clears throat> I don't think this system would work very well if this was just one word. If I just Boom. put hairspray, because hairspray then you get, companies. Yeah, you how would about get that? tons and tons of you know, or or let's say um, uh, hair. Uh, Dallas hair salons, hair salon, you know, or that, yeah, something like that. You know, as long as it's two words, mm -hmm. this is the methodology that I was liking because <clears throat> two words is good. And the reason I, I liked it is because it fits with the core of what they're selling. But the problem but you don't want is, that exact search. 
I don't want that exact search because okay. I'll get, I know I'm going to get a really high cost per conversion on that because there's going to be a ton of traffic. I'm going to sit there and, and wring my hands like, oh, should I shut it off? Should I lower the bid? I'm, it's like, it's too high. But if I shut it off, it's like 90% of my spend. And then I'm just, you know, I'm like fighting that stupid question that I always get. It's like, should I turn off my most searched keyword and put it into all this other stuff? Instead, uh -huh. I just started the entire campaign out like that. And the results have been kind of interesting. So you did hair salon <laughs> phrase match or hair salon phrase match. You added hair salon negative exact match to that ad group to block that exact search hair salon, but you want everything else phrase match. What happened? So, of course, I didn't um, get hair salon, but I got hair salons thanks okay. google so <laughs> it's like like oh dang it yeah i forgot You're they, right. they really they, respect that exact match when it's on the negative yeah, side it's like oh you don't want hair salon i got you bro i got you hair salons got you bam bam, bam you so, okay. so yeah so you, had, did you, you know, have to you, add hair salons as negative exact match yeah I, okay. I i i did um on some others i didn't because the volume wasn't too big and the main reason to do this I want to go back and explain the reasoning behind the reason is because of the budget and the volume of the market. When right. those two things were together, I really had to be careful. And if I go too long tail, you know, somebody, somebody listening out there is going to say, well, why didn't you just, you know, do a, a skag campaign with lots of long tail stuff, you know, lots of phrase. 95% of that's going to get no traffic because if I go too long tail on this, it's going to end up getting no volume. And I just have done a lot of work on something where only 10% of it's working anyway. So the idea is that there's too much traffic, but I can't be specific enough because it is a new campaign. That's another thing I didn't mention. It's a brand new campaign. I have no history. I have no idea. New so, industry. For so it. two questions. Were you able to spend the budget you wanted to spend and get volume, actually get volume? And what kind of, what kind of uh, search terms did you get? What happened? Yeah. So, what what was what was really interesting, and this my actual client is uh, as you would guess, I'm a B two B guy, so I do a lot of business to business clients. So it's a B two B industry kind of uh, client. So I the hair salons thing kind of starts to fall apart on the example because I can't give search terms. But um, what I I'll, I'll speak in generalities. What I got was exactly what you would expect for these kind of terms. The core term is there, but there's something in front of it. So I got things like um, prices, quotes. I got the word custom. I got um, you know uh, who who sells or um, wow. companies. Uh, you know, companies will be at the end of the keyword. Something you know the real the stuff that you know you can actually look at. And when you see hair salon, you think, well, like, are you wanting to start a business? Are you looking for a picture? You know, like, what do you mean right. by hair salons? But if they say hair salons near me, now we're talking, right? I mean, that's a good one. Um, uh, hair salons custom. Was it a software, yeah, Chris? Was it a software? No, it's yeah. not a software. Okay, then I think what you could do is a great example now. I'm thinking about payroll software. That's a huge search probably. But if you put that as phrase and then put ex exact negative payroll software and payroll softwares, you're going to get a ton of uh, what, what like payroll software pricing, uh, the best payroll software, payroll software companies, payroll software yeah. for this industry, that industry. Um, what is, is that what you were trying to get when you, when you started your campaign? Exactly. I mean, that's, that's what I, that's what I wanted for new campaigns. I'm always worried about the guess, you know, the guesswork mm -hmm. of starting a new campaign. That's what, you know, because, if you start a new campaign, if I would have had hair salon along with 30, 40 other words, yeah. you know what it would have gotten 90% of the traffic? Hair salon, right? At least on the right. keyword level. The search terms would have been all over the place, but the, on the keyword level, it would have been 80, 90% of the spin would have been that one keyword. So what I liked is that I was immediately able to diversify my traffic without having to go in and just... <coughs> like like be super creative about you know I, had, I didn't have to create 50 different ad groups 
on all these different subcategories. So after five uh, days, you're kind of letting the system do kind of on the cheap. You keep your budget tight in the first month, mm-hmm. but after the first seven or 14 days, you're going to get tons of search term data. You're going to see the way people search for this topic in this industry. Yep. Yeah. And, and actually one thing that's nice that I have not seen that I'm realizing um, that I'm not seeing it because I think this is why if I were to have um, hair salon modified broad two words, mm-hmm. you know what you're going to get? You're going to get a lot of competitors, going to get lots of competitors because the word hair salon, you know, and then a company name is going to be in there somewhere and it could be mixed around in different ways. You're going to get a lot of competitors. I didn't see a lot of competitors and that's what I like. It saved me so much time. And yes, the amount of traffic I got was limited, but that was the idea. I'm working with a limited budget. It's a, you know, they're sampling the market to see how well they can do. And I've, I've been surprised of the, you know, the, the conversion rate has been good. I talked to the client and they're like, yeah, in the first two weeks, we got some, you know, got like this huge um, deal from this guy, you know, like from this random search and, you know, it worked. So we're already in the black. It hasn't even been the first month yet. I'm only like three months, three weeks. And you're getting conversion data back into the account. Yeah. Yeah. And this is, keep in mind, this is B2B stuff. This is like the hardcore stuff that's hard to get. You can't just do, you know, hair, hair salon. It has to be like, um, you know, hair salon software, you know, so you were, like you were doing the, you were doing the, uh, what we talked about last week, a little bit, just make Google ads as simple as possible when you're starting out and approach mm-hmm. it humbly and build as simple as possible. Cause the goal is to build and scale up, but you want to start, you want to start, you actually want to start. You don't want to build for three weeks with 500 ad groups, or at least you and I don't, I don't know what everybody else yeah. says there out there, yeah. but you and I don't, because there's no point. Uh, Because you got to get data and see how things come in. So you were doing that. Sounds like you were adding some really core keywords that you knew people would be searching for. But then it sounds like you ran into a problem of being like getting overwhelmed with volume for some just very small select keywords that were super high volume. And you weren't really accomplishing your goal of figuring out how to scale and build and figure out the industry. But blocking off those high volume, duh, generic keywords. You're allowing this system to work where you can kind of get very quickly see the way people search for things and get ideas. Yeah. Yep. Interesting. That's it. And so if you, you gotta, ever wanted you to do that, you a exact, name for it. Uh, the, lo- the long short tail. How about that? The long short tail. I was honestly, my name is the the humble heroin addict strategy. Wow. <laughs> That's not where I was going. I want to keep the word heroin. Because there's there's two ways the podcast, there's, but... there's two ways you can spin it because either. Either you're an expert Google Ads manager, one of the best on the planet, and you're so Yoda and you're so wise that you know what you don't know. And you've just seen people walk into the quicksand of building stuff out too complex and keyword research and all that kind of stuff. So you're Mm -hmm. taking it back and you're humble and you're starting small and you're going to figure out how to grow. That's one way to look at it. The other way is you're a heroin addict and all you have time for before you pass out on the heroin is just putting in that one keyword (laughs) And it was blowing up your account. So you figured out, you know what? If I put this exact match negative, I can get back to my heroin. That's another way to look at it. So I think if we call it the humble heroin addict, we'll never, strategy, we'll never forget it. All right, Chris. um, My next one, it's not anything I have accomplished right now. But I guarantee you, by the end of this year, I will accomplish this. Um, Lay, Lay down the gauntlet. I'm going to become the world's foremost leading expert on quality score. Uh, Jason. Okay. Tell me, tell me how Jason, this is, this is, I feel like this is in contrast to the purpose of this show. We want to be practical. Explain to me how being the world's foremost expert on something that you are locked out of, <laughs> you don't have any information on. Explain how that's going to happen to me, Jason. I've, I've, uh, I've been to the dark side. Okay. And I have to go back. I'm going to figure out a way to get back. 
it's like lost wow. the tv show bro. i'm gonna figure out mm-hmm. how to get there we got to go back obviously the way we talked about quality score in the past is and we both agree on this you do everything you can do naturally to figure it out to get it right you target good keywords or you don't you target keywords that work for your campaign because you're focused on leads so you target keywords that you want to target you make great ads that are relevant to the person's search because why wouldn't you that's what we're supposed to do and you have a good website and you give people what they're looking for and that's all quality score is those are the factors that's what you can control we talked about expected click through rate one of the factors of quality score and it's not there anymore in the documentation, but it used to say quality. <laughs> expect, it did. It used to say expected click to rate is not only based on your account, it's based on all accounts of all time for this keyword, basically, is what it said. I'm paraphrasing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Doesn't say that anymore. So, they listen to the show and they're like, oh, we need to fix that. <laughs> right. So, but I don't know. I don't know if I got knocked out and had a dream or something, but I've. I've, I've just been looking at quality score and I've been thinking, okay, if I could get this three, which I can't do anything about on this one word or this six or whatever, up to a nine, up to an eight, Ooh. I could add a ton of value for my clients and I could crush the competition. And I don't know if it's a fruitless pursuit, but I'm going after it. I'm going to try to figure it out because and, I want to, because it's and, working. And, and to- to take it to a simple level, the reason, Jason, uh, why killing the quality score and doing a super good job, the reason it would kill the competition is because a keyword that would otherwise be unprofitable for you, might, the conversion rate might be too high. Excuse me. The cost, cost for conversion rate. might be too high. Um, you know, it's just not affordable to run it. The, the CPC is too high. The conversion rate is too low. You just can't afford it. You know, you're shooting for you know, this many leads and you, you just can't afford it. If you were to take it from a three to a nine, a three to or a six to a nine or a three to a seven, immediately your CPC goes down, your affordability on that keyword is improved and you can now afford show up higher. to show up on that keyword and get more show, conversions. Show up higher. So that's yeah. why it's okay. So, well, so, that's so ad rate is determines who shows up and what order they show up in. Obviously, all things being equal, position one's going to get more than position two, position two more than position three. Just to give people an example, if a $20 bid has a, a quality score of 10, that's a 200 ad rank, 200, okay? If a, if a keyword has a quality score of four, that's a $50 bid. So to get to the same ad rank of 200, if I have a 10, I'm bidding 20. The other guy's bidding 50, more than double. So uh, I don't know, Chris. I can just tell you I've launched some campaigns recently. I've been very frustrated that they just come out of the box with low quality scores. I'm doing everything oh, right. True. We talked about it on Patreon yeah. a little. I don't know if it was – I don't know what the issue was, but I'm sick of not knowing. I can't stand yeah. it. And I'm going to know everything there is to know about quality score in 2020 and be the world's foremost leading expert. Hey, if, if that's the case, um, I will name my third child after you, Jason, because that would be, that'd be amazing. And just so you know, we have no plans of having a third child. Um, so that'd be quite an honor <clears throat> if I, if I had an unexpected child named and Chris, I'm not going to lie so. about it. I'm not going to be like uh, some idiots out there. Okay. I'm not going to just op- on, like lie about it. If I can't You're crack do the this code, then I can't crack it. No, no. I'm okay. saying if I can't crack it, I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell people. Oh. I it. I'm going to be in the same okay. boat I am now, which is we understand it to the extent we can. We do everything we can to get it right. But other than that, we don't know the secrets and the black box. And I just feel like, I don't know. Maybe I'll study patents out there. I really don't know, but I'm going to scour. I'm going to scour the earth until I figure this out. Um, And if I if I can't, then I'll I'll say I can. I'm not going to be one of these people like, oh, we'll get you all nines and tens, blah blah blah. But if I if I can figure it out, it's it's going to be a game changer. Okay. Hey, I'm excited, man. That is a heck of a goal for 2020. I'm I'm behind you. 
And uh, I hope Chris, you figure I have, it out because it would be a nothing, benefit for everyone. I have nothing everyone. left in this game to conquer. This is the that's last true. level of the game. That's the that's the closed door that no one has completely drilled a, a peak hole through yet. So you're going to be the uh, peeping tom of the of the show. I um uh, I cheer you on for that. You're going to get through that little crack. You're going to and see what's going on. So, <clears throat> Jason, for my final um, topic, I, I I want to direct your eyes. Uh, please prepare your screen for the Google Ads interface. I want you to pull it up and go to your uh, campaign, your all campaigns view. And uh, when you're there, open a new tab and go to opto.com slash PSP because you need to check out this great tool from a great company that wants to save you time. Automate time-consuming uh, tasks with optio.com slash PSP. You can, you, can, you can do all kinds of things. You can finally get out of the repetitive task of going in, adjusting this, hoping that what you do is going to work. Instead, you can get an analysis system that will give you uh, definitive results about, hey, based on your information, if you do this, this will happen. And computers are smarter than humans, at least on uh, mathematically wise, and they can help you make that decision. This is a smart system. Be smart. Get optio.com slash PSB. Get an extended trial. Click the little chat button. Tell them you want the extended trial because you're a listener of the paid search podcast. Now, Jason, I gave you time. So now what I want you to do on the top left of the screen, I want you to click the little white drop down and Arrow. right next to the all campaigns and you click on campaign groups, all campaign groups. Let me guess. The screen is completely blue for you. Well, you said all groups, all campaign groups is what I clicked. Sorry. On. Thank you. Thank you. All okay. campaign groups. Oh, okay. Chris, did you mess up my I account? Can... Get me back. Get me back to what it was. Get me back to what it was. Before. I can see it. I can see it reflecting on your face. I know the screen was blue. Yeah, I knew it. So, this, Jason, I want to introduce you to. You don't have to introduce our, me to this. Oh, yeah, I do. Oh, yeah. Come on. It's blue <laughs> because you don't use it. Shut up. <laughs> oh, damn. Call my bluff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can see it glowing on your skin. <laughs> okay. This, my friend, is campaign groups. And I'm going to say right out of the bat, this won't apply to everyone. Sometimes you don't need it because you have like one campaign. You don't really need campaign groups. But, Jason, I know yeah. as the Michael Jordan of Google Ads, you have campaigns out there or you have accounts out there with multiple campaigns. Sure. And, my friend, what you can do is you can set up campaign groups with certain metric goals. Maybe it's spend. Maybe it's conversion volume. Maybe it's click volume, impression volume, something like that. You can set up a campaign group and monitor – the success of that metric for that group of campaigns. And it will give you a visual look of how you're scaling to reach that goal week by week, day by day. Jason, this is great for another reason. Let me tell you, I'm selling it to you. I am, I am going to sell this to you. You're going to love it. Another thing, imagine you have some campaigns that are tight, you know, just like real tight on keywords you don't need to check the search terms every day you know you know they're good stuff you have other campaigns where you want to check search terms but you have to go through those campaigns individually and then click search terms for that campaign then go to another one and click search terms for that campaign you have to look at them independently because if you were to do the entire account search terms you okay. would sure. you would see way more than you wanted instead you want to see just those four out of the 16 Jason, campaign groups, build a campaign group, click on search terms. You just see those search terms on the screen. There's all kinds of ways to use this tool. Those are two. That's the only two I came up with. Amuse your imagination now to imagine how life will be better when you use campaign groups. You're really, uh, you, you got a lot of stretch with this AdWords knowledge, this Google Ads knowledge, because <laughs> the last strategy it can go unnamed. We don't need to name it again. But I mean, that, that was as small and tight as it gets. And then this is like pretty much only applicable if you've got a ton of campaigns. If you have a ton okay. of campaigns, you got a ton of ad groups. So that's just True. interesting. 
that's that was a small note, Jason. That was a small note. I may be eliminating ninety percent of the people out there that don't need it. Good point. You made a good point. Yeah. Let's scream over. The okay, so I do. I do have some accounts where what I do, I track budgets. Okay, I track mm. spend, and what I do is I have a filter on the campaign area, uh, based on the naming structure. And I'm constantly like filtering and looking at the spend for that group of campaigns. Um, so that's interesting. I could use it for that. Um, and then, yeah, you're right. Search terms. I do like looking at my search terms for uh, specific groups of campaigns. And it is called campaign groups. Chris, what I'm, what I'm wondering is once it's no longer blue here, what does it look mm -hmm. like when you have some groups going on? When when you first well, get in there? When when you When you... When you set it up and you choose what your your performance target metric is going to be and which campaigns you want to put into the group, what you can do is then you you load it up, you click on it, and it shows you your uh, performance targets on a little graph to be able to see um, how you're going to be hitting those budgets. Are you on track to be able to hit those budgets uh, for those set of campaigns? So if those need, those campaigns need to spend five thousand dollars by the end of the month then you can make sure those three are going to total up to 5,000 and you'll be able to see that. And then the cool thing oh, is, get out, I of like town. is get out of town right now. Really? You can track budgets across multiple campaigns and it'll track your, your In, projection. Exactly. Independently. You don't have to create a filter and then click on that filter. It'll give you a projection. That's the extra step is that what this tool do for you is give you an extra step to give you a projection. Are you on track? Performance you know, targets. Spend, is that where it is? Performance targets. Yeah. There's, there's even something on here about unique users. I personally have not used this, but unique users is a really interesting metric where you can see how many unique users the campaign's bringing to you if you're running a display or a video campaign. Cool. Uh, like the total number of unique users in a month, you want to be able to bring in X number and it will eliminate repeats and give you unique users for, uh, for that campaign. All kinds of interesting little little tweaks here um and what and the final thing that i like is that now let's say you have a complicated list of campaigns you can pick and see only the metrics that relate to this ad group you can then click into that campaign group and and see just the keywords just the campaigns just the ads just the conversion search terms for those campaigns. So it's a, it's a Google created, Ads account for that group. It's like a sub account within <coughs> an account. Exactly. Oh, I really like that. I really like that performance target with the budgets. That's cool. Um, yeah. Let me ask you, like if, if I'm going through my search terms for a group of campaigns and I add a negative, like straight to one campaign, I just add it to a campaign. Can you do, or, or I want to change a bid or I want to pause an ad group. Can when you do all that stuff in the all campaign groups area, is that like actually doing it? It's not like an experiment where you create a draft and then push. Is this actually oh, no, it's live? live? Yeah. It's okay. definitely yeah, yeah. So this these are live changes when you go in there. These are live changes, and when you make a change, it doesn't change just that group. It changes just that campaign, or you know, it doesn't change things as a group. You know, you don't change the if you change the bids, it changes all the bids. That's not the way it works. But it no, but it's like you can go into one campaign of your group like you would normally change. Yes. If I want to change one keyword bid like I would normally, it it just does it like normal. It's yeah. a normal and, management. Okay. And I, I know we have lots of agencies out there that listen to the show. So you guys that maybe wow. there's multiple people that work wow. on one account and you're responsible for like three campaigns out of 100. Yeah. I know I, I have some some clients that I work with that everybody has their hands in one account mm -hmm. and I have like 10 campaigns among hundreds that are in there that are mine. I use campaign groups to filter that down and see a very simple, oh, here's the chart just for me. And I know you can do this with filters, but it's different with filters. Filters, you have to set the filter at every level. And all, also there's a limit terms, on the amount of filters you can do. Right, right. So if you wanted to see search terms and you went, you were at the campaign level, then you clicked on search terms. Now you need to create another filter and mm -hmm. save it just to see just those. This wow. automatically happens once you set it up. How long you've been using this campaign group thing, Chris? Oh, it's uh, 2019. So a long time, like last year. I know, but what part of last year? 
last last century or last decade last maybe. decade yeah last decade last decade fourth quarter or before the fourth quarter i used it in the uh been using it since uh like september october of last year so a never months. never felt back. the need to share that with me nope nope never <laughs> I've shared, do you know, do you remember what I shared with you a few months well, I ago? I know. And, and I told you using it now. Yeah. Did that not change, like really help your business and make you some good money? And, and I just gave you that. Yeah. I was able I to remember buy my I said, house. I wouldn't tell this to anybody else, but I know, oh, I know we have that where we just tell each other and you didn't Jason, tell me I have this. So many, I have so many things I hold back so that I can space it out and make this podcast last as long as it possibly can. You're welcome. I'd love to just be able to control you right now with violence against your will <laughs> and get it out of you. What else do you know? But You can't reach me. You know, we're hundreds of miles away. You've uh, physically never touched me. I've never touched you, but we've stared into, into each other's eyes 400 hours of our lives. So you're, I'm looking at this uh, stupid trophy you, you sent me in the mail. Oh, I stay- <laughs> I didn't think it was a it's stupid trophy. trophy. No, I didn't think it was. I thought it had some sentimental value. And now every time I look at it, I feel played. Gonna... Like you were just distracting me with literally with a shiny object. And I got distracted and thought you were telling me everything you knew. And then you come at me with this. I know. Should I, should I have dropped this one at the beginning of the show? Is this really as a revolutionary is? I manage some big accounts. And um, mm-hmm. this is extremely useful. So, oh wow! Well, all right. Well, i i didn't I didn't know I didn't know how well it was going to come across. Um, I mean, I use it for like two. Well, let me ask you: uh, the accounts that you do use it on is it is it been a game changer to your workflow and all that? Uh, it's uh, not a game changer, but it's been a time saver. It's a huge time saver for okay. me, absolutely, because working with filters is a half and the filters never seem to respawn as for a lack of a better term in the proper way that you want them to you know sometimes oh, oh this filter is for so some reason not there anymore i need to you know um recreate it or something so this is static it works all the time and i can customize it the way i want it so yeah it's well, chris between uh great mine. great tips like that and then if i figure it out tips about quality score i mean we're just oh man changing the world here so yeah absolutely oh i think i think uh i think we need to uh we've had some requests i I think we need to be invited to a um to a conference i want to speak at a conference somewhere that's my goal for 2020 i want to invite me to stand on stage and drop one of these bombs because i got them hidden i got ideas got stuff jason you can come too yeah, you'll be my, uh, I'll be like your agent. You're yeah. the talent, I'm the agent. <laughs> I want you behind a desk. Why don't you sit behind a desk and I'm going to stand up in, in front of the podium. They're like, well, uh, can we get, like, how are we going to pay Chris? And I'm like, no, you you're going to do me. the PowerPoint. I'll take care of Chris. You're going to do the PowerPoint. That's, you're going to be a PowerPoint guy. Okay. It's going right. to be great. You're going to love it. Okay, well, uh, thanks for listening, everybody. We'll be back next week with the next episode of the Paid Search Podcast. If you want more, we got more every single week. We do an after show every single week. It's $2 a month. It's Patreon. Go to paidsearchpodcast.com. Right side of the page on desktop, you'll see a big Patreon after show image. Click it. It'll bring you over to Patreon. Sign up. You can listen to it just like a podcast. You get a uh, whatever those feeds are. You can put it in your podcast player like Apple Podcast, and it'll come in each week uh, when we put it out Mondays with the PSP. So the after show is on Patreon. And with that, we'll see you next week.